All right. Hello, everyone. So I decided I'm going to do a walkthrough for the Excel assignment four, the one that we did in class on Wednesday, just because um, I feel like this is one of our harder assignments and I think it would be a good walkthrough. And this will actually relate to our final project. So I figured um, it would be a good video to have here. So I have downloaded Excel assignment four from D2L and I'm going to go ahead and put in my uh, last name, first name and my dog tag. Um, I've seen a couple of people submit assignments where they don't put in their name, but usually they have their name in the assignment, um, like save, but you just want to double check that it's there. So for Excel assignment four, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be creating an amortization schedule um, for three different vehicles for this, 20, or, uh, this 2002 Chevy Malibu, for this 2014 Honda CRV, and for this 2022 Tesla Model S. And what a amortization schedule is, is essentially it tells us what our monthly payment is, how much of that payment goes towards principal, so how much actually pays down the loan, and how much goes to interest. And then we're actually going to show the remaining balance for the um, end of the payment period. And it'll also add up to our total interest paid, our total principal paid, and our total loan amount. So we are learning a couple different functions today. And if you'll follow along in the lab book, we will see that we are learning the PMT, the payment function, the PPMT function, the principal payment function, and the IPMT function, that is the interest rate of the payment. So first, what we need to do is we need to calculate our um, monthly payment, and our monthly payment is going to be the exact same every single month. And one thing I would highly recommend, and one reason why I'm making this video is um, to, if you have a question about something, go ahead and stop the video, rewind it, and you can look at my specific formulas like up here in this white bar. You can see exactly what I'm doing, and I'll go ahead and zoom in my screen a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So we walk into the bank and we say, hey, I want to buy this 2002 Chevy Malibu with 165,000 miles, and you're asking the bank for a loan of $3,000. And they come back and they say, all right, Brandon, all right, Professor Griffin, whoever is asking for the loan, I will give you a two-year loan with monthly payments, so there are 12 payments per year at 3.49% interest rate. So what we can do is, um, one thing that may help you out a little bit, you could add something that says, you could add a column, like probably above loan amount, you could add a column that says um, maybe total payments. I didn't do this in the class lecture, but this might help out. So we can add a row, or you can just type it in manually, and it's going to be how many payments per year plus however many years. So we have two years of the loan, and we're doing 12 payments per year. So that means we're going to have 24 total payments. And I'll go ahead and bold that just to, uh, so you know that's something new. So now we can calculate our monthly payment. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the payment function. But one thing that's unique and different about the payment function is a... Payment on a loan is considered a cash outflow. So a cash outflow is when money leaves your pocket. Money is leaving your pocket and it is going into the bank's pocket. So an inflow is when cash goes into your account, goes into your pocket, and outflow is when cash goes, um, cash goes out of your pocket. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do negative payment. So essentially what that is saying is just turn this number positive. And this would all still work if you did, didn't did use that negative sign. Your um, mathematical formulas would just have to change a little bit. So another thing we need to calculate is our interest rate per month. So like we calculated before, we have 24 total payments for this loan. And this amortization schedule breaks out however many payments we have. So it goes from 1 to 24. Um, 1 to 24 payments, but this interest rate right here is an annual interest rate. So 3.49% annually where our payments are monthly. So we need to convert this annual interest rate into a monthly interest rate. And how we're going to do that, we are going to take 3.49 and we're going to divide it by how many months there are in a year. So 3.49 divided by 12, but we're going to do that inside our formula. So we're going to do equals, we're starting our formula, negative payment, and then it asks for the rate. So that is our annual interest rate, but we're turning it into a monthly interest rate, so we're dividing that by 12. And since we're gonna be coming back to the C6, go ahead and do an absolute cell reference. 
Remember, you can do F4 to automatically put the dollar signs in front of the C and the 6, or you can manually go ahead and put dollar sign C, dollar sign 6, divide that by 12, and that will give us our monthly interest rate. So now that is our rate function, or our rate argument within this function. So rate is our 3.49 divided by 12, and we have created an absolute reference for that. This NPER, that is the total number of payments. What you can do, you can type in 24, or because uh, we have already calculated it right here, you can reference, what is a cell C9, and I'm going to do an absolute cell reference because we're gonna copy and paste this down. So F4, you may have to hit the FN button before hitting your F4, and then we need to do the present value. So how much is the uh, loan valued at right now? $3,000, and we do a closed parentheses. So we hit enter and we see that our monthly payment on this 2002 Chevy Malibu based on a loan amount of $3,000, uh, 24 total payments and a 3.49% interest rate gives us a monthly payment of $129.59. That is awesome. So I just barely copied and pasted this formula down and there's an error, something went wrong. So one way that you can see where your formula went wrong or where it is, is you can double click inside the formula or what I like to do is uh, hover on top of the cell that you just put the formula in and click up in this white bar and everything that you just referenced will um, show up in different colors. So we can see that we did an absolute cell reference for annual interest rate, good. We did an absolute cell reference for total payments, good. But we forgot to do an absolute cell reference for loan amount. And because we are copy and pasting our data down, each time we copy and paste it down, our references will shift down. So like this one, one below, everything stays the same, but where this 3000 is right here, that shifted down one. So let's go ahead. I created an absolute cell reference for all three of my arguments in my payment function. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that down. So you should see a monthly payment that is identical through periods one through period 24. So a monthly payment on this car is going to be $129.59, but that is a monthly payment. So now we need to calculate the principal, and the principal is how much actually goes down to paying the loan, and the interest is how much goes to the bank, how much goes to the lender, because this $129.59 doesn't all go to paying your car. The bank needs to earn, earn their money, and it's actually interesting. You pay less principal up front than you do at the end, and you pay more interest than you do up front than you do at the end. So the bank's actually getting most of their money at the front of a loan versus towards the end. So let's go ahead and calculate this um, principal. So we're going to do equals, and we're going to change this from a cash outflow just to a positive number. Negative PPMT, that uh, returns the payment on the principal given for an investment. So we have, uh, one extra argument in this um, for or in this formula right here. It asks for the rate, so that's our 3.49, which we did before. So 3.49 absolute cell reference. Divide that by 12, so that is our monthly interest rate. And then it introduces this PER, and PER stands for period. I'm looking right below this square, this little cheat sheet right here. PER. And that is the period of the payment because Excel is smart enough to figure out based on which period um, the payment is what the principal is. So the period we are at is the first month. So the period one of 24. So because we will be copy and pasting this down, you actually do not need to do an absolute cell reference. So I'm just going to leave that uh, how it is. I'm not going to put in dollar signs then comma, and then this NPER, which is the number of periods, we reference this 24, and because we will copy down, we want to keep it there, we're going to do what's called an absolute cell reference, so hit F4, and then we're going to do present value, and the present value is how much the loan was at at the beginning of the loan, so how much was the loan originally for, that was at $3,000, let's go ahead and do an absolute cell reference, and we close out with the parentheses and we could put in more functions or more arguments in this function like a future value or when the interest gets accrued or when or excuse me when the payment happens but there are only four required arguments so now we hit enter and we see that our principal payment for period one is 120 dollars and 87 cents so this payment is actually higher than our principal 
and that is the interest portion of this um, payment. So one thing you could do, this is a little cheat, because the principal and interest, the PPMT and the IPMT uh, functions are almost identical, we could actually um, use the exact same arguments in here. So if we wanted to, we could like um, go up here and copy and paste and paste over there. But just copy and pasting it regularly might mess up our formulas a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and type it in. That's a little bit more advanced. But if we wanted to do that, you would double click in here. Because once you've double clicked and you see these colors, you can now copy and paste text. Uh, and it does it just as text. It doesn't copy and paste like the position of the function. So we double clicked in here and we selected everything and we copied it. And then you click out and you double click in here. And you can paste that, but change that to IPMT, and we get our interest. But that's a little bit more advanced, so we're going to do it uh, how we know how. So we go to cell E13, we hit equals, and we're going to do negative IPMT. So we're just turning that cash flow into a um, positive cash flow, just into a positive number. Our rate is our 3.49. Let's, let's go ahead and do an absolute cell reference. Divide that by the number of months, 12 in a year. Our period, we are in the first period, comma, how many periods are there? There are 24. Let's go ahead and do an absolute cell reference. And then we need to do the present value of a loan. And you'll keep going back to this $3,000 amount. So let's go ahead and create an absolute cell reference. Let's close that. And we see, we see that we uh, have an interest payment or the portion of our payment that goes towards interest is 873. And principal plus interest should equal payment. So if we wanted to, we could do a little check here. So we could do equals and we could add principal and interest. So if it equals 129.59, we know that we have done this correctly and it does equal 129.59. So boom, we've got that correctly. But now we want to figure out the remaining balance on our loan. Um, so let's move on to the next step. So now we're going to do balance, which is equals. And then all that is, is that is going to be our loan amount of $3,000 and we do not subtract the monthly payment. We subtract the principal portion of the payment. Let me say that again. We do not subtract the monthly payment. We subtract the principal portion of the payment. So go to our $3,000, which is our original loan amount, original loan amount, and we subtract our principal, which means at the end of month one, we now have a remaining balance on this car of $2,879.13. So we can go ahead and we can copy and paste principal and interest. So you can select these two and you can actually drag. So normally your cursor is like this little white plus, this little white cross. If you select a cell or multiple cells and hold it in the bottom corner, you see it turns into this black plus sign, this black cross. So you can actually drag and drop or uh, you can just double click and it'll uh, paste it down. So our balance is $2,879. And we need to do one more thing because we are no longer going to be referencing this original loan amount of $3,000. We are going to be referencing, oh, I accidentally moved that. We are going to be referencing um, this new loan balance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, remaining loan balance of $2,879. 0.13 and we're going to subtract our principal of 121.22 and we are going to copy and paste it down. So by the end of 24 months, this 2002 Chevy Malibu has a zero dollar um, loan amount, which means we've paid off the loan. And as we can see, the amount of principal is lower um, the earlier on and it gets higher the later on it goes. So, um, interest is higher at the beginning and it gets lower towards the end and now let's figure out how much our total interest we paid so for total interest we are going to use the sum function so we're going to add up all of these interest amounts so it is the sum of e13 through e36 so we paid a total of 110 dollars and 28 cents to interest and the principal is the sum of our principal portions of our payments so we paid $3,000 on principal and $110.28 to interest. So our total loan amount is $3,000 plus $110.28, which means for this $3,000 loan at 3.49% interest, 
um, for two years, we paid $3,110.28. So I'm going to go ahead and save that just so I can save my work. And you're going to do this identical thing for the Honda CRV um, and for this Tesla Model S. A couple uh, things are going to be different for these. The Honda is for five years. So instead of going to 24, you're going to 60. That's a change. And the Tesla, you're going for seven years. So what is that? That's 84 payment periods. And the interest rates are also a little bit different. But everything's basically going to be the same. So finish this, save it, uh, submit the assignment, and make sure you take Excel assignment quiz, Excel assignment quiz four. Um, and feel free to email me if you have any questions. But if not, everyone have a great night.